arrived this week at the World Economic Forum here in Davos, Switzerland. President Trump will be here tomorrow. Joining me right now in a first on Fox Business interview, Dow DuPont Executive Chairman, CEO, Andrew Liveris, who is also the head of the now disbanded President uh, Americans Manufacturing Council. Good to see you, sir. Thanks so much for joining us. Nice to be with you, Maria. Yeah, no, we're, we're coming into this meeting, there was a lot of optimism, but would you say that this is one of the most optimistic Davos meetings you've ever seen? Definitely one of the most optimistic and also one full of expectation for the president's visit here on Friday. So really the topic is the president's visit. So most of us are getting all of our meetings done before tomorrow because I think it's going to tilt very quickly to what the president is going to say and and his kind of his team's kind of coming in already. We're meeting some of them. I've had a couple of meetings today with U.S. officials. Uh, I've never seen such a strong U.S. delegation. So this is kind of opposite to the America first thing. I mean, this is America engaged and as a global company, uh, this is a positive thing. And I think my European colleagues and rest of the world colleagues, Asian, Middle East, Africa, they're all kind of waiting to see how the U.S. will posture itself. This is a really good uh, way to put it. America engaged. Engaged. I yeah. like that. How's the president doing in your view? I, I know that, you know, you were on that council, you were yeah. the chairman, it was disbanded, um, there was upset at that time, but how would you grade President Trump's well, right Well, from a year ago to present day, even through the year with the disbandment of the council, I've been very consistent in that answer. This is a very business-friendly president, very business-friendly administration, so I give him a strong A. I mean, I, I you know, tax reform you just talked about, I mean, but not just tax reform, the regulatory work that's yeah. being done is astonishing. I've never imagined that much progress in 12 months or so. And, of course, other work that I'm involved in, which is I'm on Secretary Acosta's um, Workforce Reinvention Council. This is the Apprenticeship Task Force, which is to redefine what the American system is producing in terms of skilled workers with digitalization approaching us. I'm very encouraged by that work and that early stuff that we're doing to change the way America supplies workers we need. Yeah. And it's, so I'm very, I give, I give it a strong A. It's, it's very important because we're seeing machine learning take Absolutely. over jobs and we're seeing yeah. new skill sets really required okay so positive marks on the tax reform package we know that we yeah. know what's gone on with all of these companies coming out and saying how positive yeah. it is but we're also seeing a debate around the trade story yeah. and that's what I want to get your take on because the president issued new tariffs on imports Absolutely. of solar panels and washing machines from Asia what do you make of this well so you know now that as you just said tax reform happening and let's get the details of that finalized but trade is of course uh, on his agenda and the business agenda, uh, the topic he ran for office on. And there's a lot of work to be done, whether it be the, the redoing uh, of NAFTA in whatever form it takes, the China discussion, and, of course, uh, all the things that the president worries about, which is giving Americans jobs that they can count on for the future. You just mentioned machine learning and digitization. We all know that's as big a potential job killer as anything in the trade agenda. So we've got all to engage our workers. We've got to engage the American public to actually put the facts in front of the table of what is the trade topic, and it is. And look at Dow. I mean, I export from the United States to all, all the countries of the world. One in five of my jobs is based on Amer America being a trader, so we've got to keep trade. Mm. But what the president is doing is wants to change the rules of engagement, and I think we all have to engage in that topic. So what are these rules? Yeah. Okay, it isn't just about putting tariffs on. And on that tariff question, I mean, we Dow make uh, polysilicon. That's a, the raw material for solar panels. We've been excluded from the China market for the last five years. So that's not fair. So this, these tariffs and solar panels is a way of sending a signal that it can't be one way. Yeah. It can't be one way trade. And I support the president on that. This is really important because yeah. you've actually seen firsthand the impact yeah. of much pr cheaper product coming from China. Absolutely. And, and so American workers, we, we, we can't, we are now having plants at risk, factories at risk because I can't access the China market and they favor their own producers. Yet the solar panels have been coming over here and killing our solar panel industry in the United States. So there needs to be a recalibration. We've had lots of conversations with Secretary Ross and the USDR on this topic. So that's an example of recalibrating the rules of trade. Yeah. And I'm all for that. But I think we need to get the facts on the table, get the rhetoric out of the room, and, you know, what are these new rules of engagement in terms of fair trade? This is the first explanation that really I've heard that makes so much sense because you're right there yeah. and you're feeling it firsthand. Exactly. The worry is, of course, are we going to see retaliation? I mean, are you going to see China even get more secluded and, and even more protectionist in terms of their solar panels? Well, well, since antiquity and city-states and bartering, you, of course, get tit-for-tat. You, of course, get retaliation. This is what negotiation is. This president is a negotiator. Yeah. We have a team of negotiators in the U.S. side. 
I'm a business person, I'm a negotiator. As long as we end up at the right spot, I think the rhetoric and the retaliation may well be part of the process. I'm convinced, based on the speed of tax reform and the speed of regulatory reform, this will not be one of these things that takes a lot of time. So I would encourage all my colleagues, certainly our company, to be engaged, to be at the table on what these tit-for-tats will be. Do you think we're going to see more of this, like, for example, as it relates to aluminum and steel? Because the president did say he mentioned aluminum and steel, and I think that is getting some people nervous that we're going to see more and more of this kind of tariff uh, behavior. And well, I'm not, in, I'm not in the room that decides which ones, but I am telling you, if I look at chemicals, for example, we have a surplus. We're the second largest exporter from the United States. Yeah. So, so we would hate to see a steel and aluminum thing happen and then chemicals, you know, get restricted in terms of ex exporting from the United States into China or any other country. So I, I would be counter doing too much tit for tat, but I think this recent one is a strong enough message that the United States is serious. Yeah, for sure. For China. And, and you've given us phenomenal insights into this, Andrew. Thank you for that. Not at all. You are set to retire as chairman of, of Dow DuPont later this year after overseeing this historic deal, uh, the merger late last year. Now, I know you're reporting earnings. You're going to be giving us uh, guidance on all of this in, in, in the coming week. But what can you tell us in terms of the timing of integration? What do you want to say to shareholders in terms of where you are today? Well, um, I think our shareholders, from our last report, to present day, what I'll say, and then what we'll say next week with specificity, this is on track. As you said, it's historic, 300 years of corporate history, and to reconfigure these assets in a tax-free way for shareholder value, for growth, for three companies, the new Dow, which will be the materials company, the new agriculture company, the new specialty company, we're on track. And uh, look, I can't be happier about the way the cultures have been assimilating, the integration work. We've got thousands of people working on this, not to mention all the help in the consultants' world that you can find. It's working, and I would tell you that right now, and you'll hear more next week, uh, it's, it's basically on track. And, and, and in terms of growth, look at five years. Yeah. Where does the growth come from at this company? Well, I've got to tell you that the uh, humanity and sustainability, which gets talked about here a lot, we need products that have full recirculation capability. So all that work on light weighting, on batteries in cars, on the next car, what that looks like. Yeah, that's a good point. <coughs> packaging, what we do with food packaging, what we do with plastics in the ocean, what we do with carbon emissions. These are all opportunities for these companies, whether it be the agricultural one or the materials one or the specialty one. Water and water reuse, waste management, waste reuse. Yeah. These are the opportunities that we're addressing through using our 7,500 scientists. So this, this is where the growth comes from. That's where it comes uh, from. Let, let me ask you about regulation. Obviously, this president has been rolling back regulations. Have you felt it in your sector? Absolutely. Because I know other sectors, they're not there yet, and it's sort of the this long runway. What have you seen? Look, I can't speak strongly enough about how much we've felt it. It's not just, it's not just the attitude, it's been specific. Uh, and we've been asked. And it's kind of nice to be consulted, uh, at, you know, to be at the front end of this, to use science to say this regulation makes sense, this one doesn't. This administration has been unafraid to roll back regulations that make no sense. We felt it. We're feeling it on our bottom line, but more importantly, we're seeing it in a change in attitude on what's the smarter regulation. We are for regulation. We just want the right type of regulation to actually manage the behaviors of everyone in the value chain. Yeah. We're a big player. And, and the pendulum yeah. just swung way too far. Yeah, it did. Andrew, it's great to see you. Always good to be with Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. Not Andrew Liveris there.